Assalamu alaikum everyone. In today's video, we'll be focusing on the true spirit of fasting and its relationship with the purpose of fasting. When we fast, we should aim to achieve the real purpose of fasting or else we're just going hungry and thirsty without any real benefits. But before I discuss fasting, I want to clarify that I'm not a scholar. I'm simply a student who's learning alongside you guys. I'm making these videos especially for those who understand and connect with Quran better in English. So I want to bridge the gap and help people learn about the Quran in a way that makes sense for them. So now, how can we understand the true meaning and purpose of fasting? First, let's back up a little and talk about the concept of worship and how it relates to fasting. In Surah Dariya verse 56 of Quran, Allah says that He created humans and jinns to worship Him. And what does worship mean? It means to submit. So when we submit to God, we find ourselves obedient to the greatness, power, and authority of God. We consider ourselves His slaves. We feel small and humble and when we think of God's greatness and it makes us realize that God has given us everything we have and everything we will ever have. So as a result, all of our hopes, fears, and desires are attached to God and worship becomes more meaningful. It's not just a ritual anymore. So we thank God, we praise Him, we declare His greatness, and humans cry out to Him and pray to Him in humility and we submit. So fasting is a way for humans to show their willingness to obey God which is a key aspect of worship. So it's not just about going without food. It's a symbol of choosing to serve God in our daily lives, which is extremely meaningful. First, let's understand the reality of fasting. And what's the point behind fasting? Well, the reality of fasting is all about being obedient to God. It's a way for us to show our devotion and commitment to Him. And the second thing is the purpose of fasting, which is to increase our piety, uh, taqwa, which basically means being mindful of God and doing what's right. The third thing is the wisdom behind fasting, is to help us develop gratitude and remember the afterlife that is waiting for us when we die. All of this stuff comes from Quran, which is like a guidebook for how to live a good life. It tells us that Ramadan is the month when we read Quran and it was also revealed in the month of Ramadan. But there's a dilemma, right? Following Quran's teaching isn't always easy. We have to fight against our own egos, our desires, and all sort of things come in a way. But it's worth it at the end because we are doing it for God and for our own benefit at the end. Now, talking about fasting is one thing and listening to someone talk about it is another. But when it actually comes down to it, that's when things get real. When you're faced with temptations, you're faced with strong emotions, you get angry, you know, you tend to get in your own way. So it can be challenging to stick to a fasting routine. Sometimes when people try to control their egos and wants and their emotions, the teaching of God and His Messenger kind of go out the window. And it's not easy to control yourself. But fasting can be a big help. When you fast, you get used to controlling yourself and this can make it easier to keep your cool in everyday situations. So as we know, month of Ramadan, you either have 29 days or 30 days. It causes all types of disruptions in our daily lives. You know, we can't have food, it, we can't drink water, uh, intimacy gets sacrificed. But during Ramadan, it's Quran that gives us the script that how to be obedient and what to do and when not to do and to follow His guidance. The goal of taqwa is obedience. It's about respecting God and passing the test to avoid punishment and gain honor with God. Taqwa involves determination, seriousness, and you become more careful. That's what taqwa is all about. So that's the first part of taqwa. Now let's talk about the second part of taqwa, when a person becomes serious. They will understand the dangers and will refrain from recklessness. In other words, they will practice caution. And the third thing is the outcome, which is a person will be saved from the failure in the afterlife and the fire of hell and the shocks of judgment day. So we need to start with these two things. And the third thing is the result of that. Now let's talk about how fasting generates taqwa which is again the feeling of seriousness about our state. When we fast, we feel hungry and thirsty, which reminds us of how much we rely on food and water. This helps us learn self-control, which is like being able to tell ourselves no when we want something. Fasting becomes a way for us to connect with God, to show our submission to God. It helps us appreciate not just our physical needs, but also our spiritual and moral values. This makes us more pious and devoted to God. Being obedient to God is not an easy task. It needs us to be strong and have self-control. 
But when we fast, we stop ourselves from doing things we are normally okay doing. And we can say no to those things, then saying no to things that are bad for us should be even easier. Just like how we don't eat or drink during fasting, it's obvious that we should also avoid doing things that are against God's commands. Our wants, our needs aren't more important than following God's rules. Finally, during Ramadan, we feel grateful and learn to appreciate blessings from God. We learn this from the Quran and fasting helps us understand how valuable the things we have are. Because we temporarily give them up, it shows us that it's God that gives us everything we have and without His blessings, we would not have anything else. So the Quran gives us answers about why we are here, where we come from, and where we are going. It helps us understand life and removes confusion and doubts. Without the Quran, people can be unsure, they're confused, they're following different paths, different beliefs, they feel sad. But true Muslim approaches death with happiness, knowing they are going to internal rest. The Quran is like a treasure map that leads us to paradise, where we can find happiness, peace, and joy.